Welcome to the Credit Sense Credit Report Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we'll be reviewing the CreditKeeper.com Three Bureau Merged Report. Now, what is interesting about this particular credit report, not only does it have all three bureaus side by side so that you can compare them against each other easily, but more importantly, it's essential to understand that the credit scores that are listed here are FACO scores. If you're a Credit Sense client, you'll, you'll remember what a FACO score is compared to what a FICO score is. But these FACO scores can be instrumental in helping us understand how to improve our credit scores and track it every single month. So let's take a look at the actual credit report. The very first page that comes with the credit report is this graph and they cast out approximately a year, 13 months to be exact. And you'll notice Experian has a, has a score here, Equifax has a score, and TransUnion has a score. The legend down here shows you which colors represent which bureaus. And since this is the first credit report we're pulling, you'll be able to see your starting credit scores. Now, for those of you who are Credit Sense clients, it is essential to monitor this every single month so you can see the increase in your credit scores. And that's why we recommend mycreditkeeper.com. So continuing, one of the interesting features of this credit report is that while it's live, you can actually check these buttons down here to show only one, two, or all three credit bureaus at a time. So when you have a, a year's worth of data, by deselecting or selecting these various boxes, you can get an idea of what the progress has been for each of your credit reports and in comparison to the others. So let's continue down. Um, again, in the live credit report, these links allow you to dispute inaccurate data as well as help you with educational pieces, credit tips, etc. All right, let's continue to the second page. Now, as with this entire credit report tutorial series, we've used the exact same client to show the credit data across the board so that we have, you know, we can compare apples to apples. Well, the first thing that uh, we run into are is the personal profile. Now, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion are listed side by side in every instance as we will go through this credit report. When it comes to the personal information, what's being reported is this person's name, last name Ray. But notice they have a typo for their name. It's under, also known as, or the AKA. So we already, we already know that there are significant errors that are going to be reporting on this particular credit report. If we have John Ray and John K, that brings in a complete new dynamic of what might be reported on the credit report. So careful comparison between this credit report and the consumer disclosures that you get directly from the three credit bureaus, also available through annualcreditreport.com. Careful analysis and comparison will be required to make sure that only the proper accounts are listed. Well, in this format, the name is used across the board. Then there's also in Experian, an, an additional AKA or an alias is listed. Equifax and TransUnion do not list those. We have the year of birth, and then we have additional addresses. Now these addresses, notice we have several addresses listed, almost looking random across the board. So if you're a Credit Sense client, we must ensure that there is a singular credit identity that we present to all the creditors and to the credit bureaus. And this is a perfect example comparing them as to why that is so important. So continuing, there's it shows the current employers, previous employers, etc. But notice it says current employer, but we have a wingers, we have Pace Advertising, and Kilgore Management. All of them cannot be correct. Again, this is a perfect indication that all is not right on this credit report. And we will go through and find uh, some of these errors. All right, let's take a look at the credit summary, which is the next section. And it shows again, across Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, we have real estate accounts, revolving accounts, installment accounts, other accounts, and the derogatory summary down the left side. And here we have pure counts, balances, 
how many are current and how many are closed. Same with revolving accounts, balance, currently open, currently closed. Look at the difference between the current. There's, there's a hundred percent difference, twice as many on Equifax as on uh, Experium and three times as many on Equifax as on TransUnion. Again, indicators that there are errors on this, uh, on this credit report. Now we continue through the installment accounts, we would observe the exact same things and other accounts. And now the derogatory summary, notice that there are six derogatories on, on Experian, zero on Equifax and two on TransUnion. So, those, excuse me, those are the inquiries and public records are same across the board. Collection accounts, two of them have four, but one of them has three. Again, we want your credit profile can be managed and optimized as we gain control over all of these variables. All right, continuing. Now look at the current delinquencies. There's two delinquencies on Experian, one on Equifax and one on TransUnion. And prior delinquencies, we have this, the same on TransUnion and on Experian, only four. So this gives us an idea kind of what the range is and how far off some of these uh, these indicators may be. All right, so when we go to the account history, we're gonna be looking at all three credit bureaus. So let's move up so that we can see. Here's an IHC. All right, notice here is where the, the account name is. It's also listed here under account name. But the next account happens down here. So all of the information from here all the way down to this chart all appertain to this particular account. So we have the account name, the account number, what type of account it is, the status, whether or not there's a monthly payment, date opened, balance, terms, charge off or collection. Now, this particular account is only being listed from Experian. Part of what we need to understand is that way up here, notice there is almost, there's 45 point difference between Experian and TransUnion. Part of the reason for such a huge range between the credit reports is, and the credit scores is because varying accounts are listed only by one or more, uh, or one or two, but not all three of of the credit bureaus. All right, here we show that uh, they have a 24 month calendar and notice down here, it says CO, which is a charge off. And this was charged off in April of 07. Now let's go to a, a an account we can look at has a little bit more information with it. Account name, all things stay the same, but notice Experian reports it as America First Credit U. Equifax is Amer First CU, and Amera and TransUnion is Amer Fist CU. So even the names are showing up on the credit report differently, even though they're probably being reported the same by America First Credit Union. Okay, and the only one that's even close is this America First Credit Union by Experian. Now, as we go down, it's a revolving account. It's open. There's a $25 monthly payment. Here's the date that it's open. If you're a Credit Sense client, this information can be gleaned from here. We do not recommend that when filling out your implementation plan and your worksheets that you use this credit monitoring credit report. We want to use this to make sure all the changes that we make show up on this credit report so that we can use the scores that they give as part of our tracking mechanism. So ultimately, the changes we want to make are on the consumer disclosures that are given by the original credit bureaus, the TransUnion credit report, the Experian credit report, and the Equifax credit report. We make the changes there because they have the most complete information because they're coming from the bureaus themselves. Whereas this credit report is an aggregator. They're putting together all this information and even their disclaimer says, hey, we can't vouch that any of this stuff is accurate. Well, the original credit bureaus have to ensure to the best of their ability by law that the information is accurate. So we're using this 
credit report to compare and help us with our analysis, but the data we want to use from the, the other, the three original credit reports that come directly from the credit bureaus and are available through annualcreditreport.com free once per year. All right, let's take a look at the 24 uh, month payment history. So this is uh, 10, this is 2011, and January and February of 2012, and notice, Every payment was okay, except January 11th, there was a 30 day late and f uh, on Experian and on Equifax, there was a uh, February 2011. And down here, there's a TransUnion 2011. So if we were looking for excuses to dispute this account, we could compare that, look, on Experian and Experian and TransUnion, it's saying it happened in January, but it's saying it was in February. They both can't be true. So this qualifies for a legitimate dispute with the credit bureaus. So as you go down your own credit report, you'll be able to compare what each one of them are saying. And sometimes they're significantly different. See this high balance? We're saying it's 557 on Experian and 523 on America First. That all by itself allows us to legally and lawfully dispute this account because it can only be reported one way by America First, but it's being shown differently on different credit bureaus. We don't know which one is correct, so we get to dispute that particular account. All right. Same with uh, U.S. Department of Education. These are installment accounts, they're student loans, and all the information again is down here. It's not reporting in this trade line, it's not reporting to Experian, but only to Equifax and TransUnion. So we'd want notice all the, all the amounts line up. Everything appears to line up. All right, let's continue down and find a different type of account. Here's a GE CRB JC Penny. As we've said, anything that has a slash in front of the store name is a finance company card. The paper's being carried by a finance company card. This account has a significant drag on this person's credit report, but it's only being reported to Equifax and it's, uh, it says it was lost or stolen. And so this account was actually closed. Now, there are mortgages. Let's take a look at this one. Notice a date opened is, is the same across the board. So it's all settled. Those seem to be in, in alignment. It's not saying what the monthly payment was here. And the terms are 360, no terms here, but the terms are 360 here. So we're seeing that it was charged off. Everything doesn't jibe, but it this particular credit report doesn't necessarily give us a reason to dispute. We could saying, oh, well, um, what was the past due amount? we might be able to dispute saying there are irreconcilable differences on this credit report. We want to know why. And so we dispute the account accordingly. All right. And the next section here at the bottom of all of the accounts, here's the legend. And it shows if it's current, it says, okay, there's no data, 30, 60, 90 days late, 120 through 180. Here's where we got the charge off or collection. And here's where we got a repossession or foreclosure and it's a repossession if it's a if it's a vehicle and it will be a foreclosure if it's a uh, mortgage or a home loan and then payment plan is if they're in either chapter 13 or if they're in some uh, third-party service who is helping them pay their bills all right now the credit inquiries is the next section and as you can see these are the names of the people and organizations who have a legitimate reason for getting a copy of the credit report and it shows Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion again, and each one of the different people who have pulled that credit report. So it shows the checks. It, it, for this client, many of the things that have been pulled have been from Experian with a couple of TransUnion. If you're a Credit Sense client, you'll recognize from step seven that there is a poor use of inquiries that are jeopardizing the score because more, uh, an inordinate number of inquiries are coming from Experian and not being distributed evenly across the credit bureaus. All right, uh, one of the next sections is the public records section. And so this judgment is only being reported to Equifax. 
And this judgment is being reported to Experian. And this judgment is being reported to uh, TransUnion. So each of these different judgments are being reported to different bureaus. Now, interestingly enough, that lets that means there's a separate judgment for each bureau, but that gives you reason to dispute because if they are not being reported by all three bureaus, you have reason to believe that they're not completely accurate in their reporting process. All right, the next section is your credit score. Now they've trademarked their uh, credit expert essentials, but what they're doing, it's similar to the MyFICO program, is that they show you what your credit score is and then let's say this is TransUnion. So they're gonna come down and show you, all right, what's counting against? You got collection accounts, your payment history is bad, you've got derogatories within the last year, your credit usage, you're showing 98% utilization of your revolving accounts, and you've had too many credit applications, too many inquiries. But the positive factors is you've got a good, a good payment history, you've got a goodly number of accounts, and you've got accounts that are at least 10 years old. So each for each one of these credit reports, we're gonna go through and see what the, the negative things that are counting against the score and what are the positive things. Here for Equifax, we have 627, and down below, it says the negative factors, and you'll find basically the exact same negative factors and positive factors. That because there's 20 point difference between some of these scores, you may find what is first, second, and third may be reversed because the, of the 20 point differential in this example. All right, and then finally for Experian, we have a 646, and they go through the exact same negative factors and the exact same positive factors. Now, what's nice about this three bureau comparison is that it shows side by side what the scores are category it, this is a fair score it's not a good score than the two weak scores but this is showing you what your middle score is and this if you were to pull a, a tri-bureau merge report most lenders will use the middle score in determining whether to qualify you or deny you an extension of credit all right uh, continuing now here are some interesting things that uh, are available in this credit report and available in none of the other credit reports that we have done tutorials for. Notice there's a plus signs and minus signs. What these do is there's a positive factor, negative factor, blank is no factor, and positive and negative. So, you, so if you notice here, collection accounts and public records are of course negative across the board. Credit accounts, You've got positive ones because they're open and they've got uh, uh, either decent balances or decent ages. Credit applications, Equifax is positive, Experian is negative, and TransUnion is negative. Now remember, TransUnion only had two. So if uh, Equifax had none, and that's why it shows positive. If you're a Credit Sense client, you know that it is important to have a moderate use of inquiries spread evenly across all three bureaus. Okay, now this one is a very, very powerful report that they're providing here. They're saying that each account that is being reported differently is affecting your score differently. So notice as we go down, here's the record ID. So you can go up and look up in your uh, trade lines and find the actual account. But notice the impact on the score is high. The balance is different between the bureaus. So there's a high impact on the score because the balance is different that can either be disputed or reconciled when you when you talk to the credit bureaus there's moderate differences and here the moderate difference is based on the balance and the balance is because target is not as high as some of these uh the fourteen thousand dollar or eleven thousand dollar student loans that this person has so the amount can help significantly improve or um, bottom out your credit score based on what the balances are. Now, here, there's a differential between not only the balance, but the date opened. So there's a discrepancy. If there's any discrepancy, it can be disputed because you don't know which one is correct and both of them can't be true at the same time. 
So that merits a dispute. And as you go down, it starts high, goes to the moderates, and then you go to the lows. And these mount, if you'll recall, the America First and the Mountain Credit Union were $300 and $500 balances. So even if the balances are different, it's a low impact, but still it allows, if any of these are negative, it allows you to legitimately and lawfully dispute the account because uh, the balance has to be the same across the board when it was opened or closed has to be the same etc so this gives you a great opportunity to see what can legitimately be disputed all right and that goes all the way to bottom for every single one of these accounts now they even include inquiries here and notice they there's very low impact because we and they're not saying that there's a difference in dates or difference in balances they're the same across the board all right now another summary is shows that uh for all of the credit accounts that are listed there's 46 distinct records but equifax only has 30 of them experian has 30 uh, 32 of them and transunion has 31 of them so there's some overlap because there's 46 records something is amiss and this gives you an opportunity to see what is being misreported or unreported to, to the various bureaus. So 65% of the total are in Equifax, 70% and 67% respectively are being reported in these uh, bureaus. The inquiry is the same. There's eight of them, six of them are Experian, two of them in TransUnion, they're not the same. Collection accounts and public records. So he, now notice the public records, there are two public records and both of them are being reported in all three bureaus. All right, here are the numbers here. It tells you whether or not it's typical, but this is not relevant to us. We don't care if it's typical. If there is something being misreported, we want to dispute it so that only accurate, verifiable, and correct information is being reported on our, on our credit reports. Okay, the next section is, uh, is about your significant differences. Now, what's interesting here is that Every one of these show that there's a balance difference or an open close date difference as we've discussed before, but it's not showing any significant differences. So the math in this case is not being calculated because we know there was differences registered, but they're not reporting them down here. So for this particular client, this section does not uh, reveal a great deal, but it very well may on yours. So what it may show is there's a balance difference Equifax is showing zero. It's not showing anything on Experian and it's showing zero on TransUnion. So we would want to know why Experian is not reporting that. So notice down here on uh, Mountain High Federal, open or closed, that's the differential, but it's open here, closed here, and open here. Again, it's dispute worthy. So all of these, nothing is uh, reported on two of them and zero is reported on the third. So this tells you where the differences are and depending on how high the balances are, those can be significant contributors or detractors to your credit score. All right, let's take a look of, at the overview of those significant differences. Balances has 28 differences. The date that it was opened, it, there are three differences and whether or not it's open or closed is one difference. So all of those need to be rectified as part of your analysis and when you go to dispute these with the credit bureaus. All right, finally, here are all the disclosures and hold harmless agreements, etc. But that concludes our analysis of the Credit Keeper three bureau merge credit files.